For generations, Japan taught a simple story about its beginnings. One people, one origin, one unbroken past. But new discoveries in ancient DNA are rewriting that history. Beneath the soil of Hokkaido and the islands beyond lie genetic clues that challenge everything once believed about who the first Japanese really were. From forgotten explorers to modern geneticists, each finding adds a missing piece to an older and more complex ancestry. What scientists are uncovering is not a single origin, but a 40,000-year journey that still continues today. For decades, scientists in Japan were not allowed to study some ancient remains discovered in northern regions. These restrictions were linked to political and cultural sensitivity about Japan's origin story, which presented the country as an ethnically uniform nation. Official education emphasized a single, continuous ancestry reaching back thousands of years. However, new archaeological and genetic research has started to question that idea. DNA recovered from prehistoric skeletons suggests Japan's population has multiple roots, formed through waves of migration and mixing over long periods. One of those hidden skeletons would soon reveal that Japan's past is older and more diverse than anyone imagined. The first outsiders to meet Hokkaido's indigenous Ainu could hardly believe they were in Japan at all. In 1865, British explorer Thomas Blakiston encountered the Ainu while traveling through northern Japan. He noticed that they looked different from the Japanese people he had met in Tokyo, describing their beards, deep-set eyes, and wavy hair. Early anthropologists compared their appearance to northern Eurasian groups, which confused scholars at the time. Blakiston's reports questioned Japan's claim of being a single uniform nation, suggesting an older layer of ancestry in the islands. But for the next century, official history would erase almost every trace of these people's role in Japan's beginnings. When the Meiji government modernized Japan, it rewrote not only its laws, but its ancestry. In 1869, new policies officially labeled the Ainu as former aborigines, placing them under state control. Their lands in Hokkaido were seized, and traditional hunting and fishing rights were restricted. The Ainu language was banned in schools, and children were required to adopt Japanese names. Anthropology and education reinforced the idea that Japan had always been ethnically uniform, leaving little space for indigenous history. Generations grew up unaware that other origins existed, that silence held until one biologist quietly began to test what no one else dared. In a small Sapporo lab, a few drops of saliva began to rewrite prehistory. In the early 1990s, geneticist Dr. Masako Yamada worked with Ainu volunteers to study their mitochondrial DNA, which traces maternal ancestry. Her careful approach earned the trust of communities long skeptical of research institutions. When the results came back, they revealed something unexpected. The Ainu carried unique maternal haplogroups rarely found in the rest of Japan. This suggested that their genetic roots stretched back far earlier than the agricultural settlers who later shaped most of the population. Still, the real turning point would come not from living volunteers, but from a 9,000-year-old skeleton a construction site accidentally unearthed Japan's oldest human genome. In 1998, workers in Nagano Prefecture discovered a well-preserved Jomon skeleton buried in clay and volcanic ash. Scientists were able to extract ancient DNA from her remains, an achievement once thought impossible in Japan's humid climate. When the genome was sequenced, researchers compared it with modern populations. The results showed a striking match between the Jomon woman and today's Ainu, especially in genetic markers inherited through maternal lines. This connection spanned nearly 9,000 years of continuous ancestry. If true, this meant the Ainu were not newcomers at all, but direct heirs of Japan's first people. Then, around 300 BC, everything changed, not through conquest, 
but through rice. Groups known as the Yayoi began arriving from the Korean peninsula, bringing wet rice farming, metal tools, and new social systems. Farming supported larger populations, and over several centuries the Yayoi spread across most of Japan's main islands. Genetic studies show that as these newcomers mixed with the older Jomon people, their ancestry gradually combined, producing the foundation of modern Japanese genetics. Yet traces of Jomon lineage remained, especially in more isolated regions. Yet one region, cold, remote Hokkaido, seemed untouched by this great mixture. Hokkaido became a living archive of Ice Age ancestry. Genetic studies show that many Ainu men carry Y-DNA haplogroup D, one of the oldest lineages in Asia. This genetic branch also appears in isolated populations such as the Tibetans and the Andaman Islanders, suggesting that their ancestors separated from other Asian groups tens of thousands of years ago. Japan's island geography helped preserve these ancient markers, protecting them from later waves of migration that changed most of East Asia. The Ainu therefore represent a rare window into early human settlement in the region. But these same genes would also reveal a painful story about adaptation and survival. When researchers opened old university basements, they found more than specimens. They found ancestors. In the 2000s, investigations revealed that thousands of Ainu remains had been taken from burial sites during earlier centuries of research. Many were still stored in university collections without community consent. The discovery led to public debate about repatriation and the ethics of studying indigenous remains. Ainu representatives demanded that science proceed with transparency and cooperation, ensuring that future research respected cultural rights. These discussions began to reshape Japanese anthropology toward shared stewardship. One geneticist's quiet study inside that restricted collection would reignite national debate. When the data finally came out, it wasn't about race. It was about connection. Modern genetic studies show that nearly all Japanese people carry both Jomon and Yayoi ancestry, though in different proportions depending on region. The Ainu maintain the highest continuity with ancient Jomon lineages, yet even they share genetic links with populations across the islands. These results reveal a long process of mixing rather than replacement. Scientists emphasize that DNA explains historical movement, not cultural identity or destiny. It tells us where people came from, not who they are. Still, one unresolved question remained. How far back do these roots really reach? Before rice, before empires, even before Japan existed, humans were already here. Archaeological and genetic evidence shows that people first reached the Japanese islands around 40,000 years ago, during the last Ice Age. These early settlers carried genetic lineages that would later appear in isolated groups such as the Ainu. Their ancestry connects Japan to the wider migrations that shaped Asia, linking it to ancient movements through Siberia and coastal routes of the Pacific. The Ainu genome, therefore, preserves one of the oldest surviving genetic signatures in East Asia. And as genetic technology advances, Japan's next ancient genome may yet reveal a chapter we've never imagined.